Wishtahau Premier Nation, and maintenant je vis à Prince Albert. Good day, everybody. My name is Krista. I am originally from Kaki Wishtahau, and now I live in Prince Albert, and I am the president of the Students Association for the Northern Campus um, in Prince Albert. And so, thank you, Chris, for the great introductions, and I'm taking the time to join us today for this inaugural event. Today is a special day for Dr. Jacqueline Ottman and the First Nations University of Canada. As Chris mentioned, I'd also like to thank Elder Ratfoot for the prayers earlier this morning. All right. So uh, just to let you know that we are broadcasting this event live on the uh, First Nations University Facebook uh, page. So if, uh, if you're not supposed to be here, if you weren't let to come to this event, we just wanna let you know that you will be live streamed on that on there as well. And it's gonna be on our Facebook page. So those of you that are really social media uh, friendly and just uh, really awesome on that, share that out because we want this to be as a public event for as many people to see this, uh, this amazing ceremony. Um, we are here, ladies and gentlemen, uh, guided by our Oscapios Roland K, and we're gonna get our grand entry started here shortly. At this time, the grand entry is uh, led in by our Eagle staff, that crooked staff that's there that, that talks about and leads our way through in most of, uh, most of the events that we do. It's a very, uh, very important and significant piece for, for who we are as Indigenous people. So we're going to ask each and every one of you to please rise at this time and pay honor and homage to this beautiful event, this grand entry, this uh, leading in uh, of our Eagle staff and this recognition of our Indigenous ways of knowing and as well a recognition of the dignitaries and the beauty that they possess and also recognizing our veterans and the warriors that stood before and allowed this to happen. So I want to introduce the Red Dog Singers from Star Blanket um, Cree Nation. We're standing on their, on their traditional territory. We're standing on the traditional territory of the last hereditary chief of the Star Blanket Red Dog. And this, and this chief that, that this place is named after, this land in which all of us stood and walked and, and, and came into this place, that man was an amazing song composer. He was a keeper of our traditional knowledges and our songs. And he stood and he created this place where we wanted to continue to sing these songs forever, for eternity, so that those songs continue on. And ladies and gentlemen, we're, we're here with descendants of Chief Red Dog. We're here with descendants of this traditional territory. So ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna ask Red Dog to go ahead and take us away on a grand entry song. Anytime you're ready, boys. Aha, hey.
applause, ladies and gentlemen. At this time, while they're getting uh, while they're getting everything organized here, our Eagle staff uh, just make our way forward there. Uh, so the Eagle staff goes ahead. Uh, at this time, you know it's important for all of us to remember and recognize that there are our veterans that took the time to allow us to be here, allowed us to fight for our freedoms, so that we can be here to be strong and to be able to dance. A lot of our ancestors who kept these ceremonies alive allowed us to do this. So at this time, we recognize all of that. We recognize our relationships. We recognize treaty, and we recognize our nationhood. And we do that through song. We do that through that drum. So we're going to ask Red Dog at this time to sing that nationhood song to represent all of this that's centered in our original uh, flag of Indigenous people, this Eagle Staff, and also recognizing our relationships of treaty throughout all of our territories. So anytime you're ready, Red Dog, let's sing that flag song. Gentlemen, where we are, where we're standing, remember our veterans, remember who we are. This song is our victory song. We're dancing for the victory of our ancestors. We're dancing for the victory of today. Aha, hey! Big round of applause, awesome, grand entry. At this time, I'm gonna introduce our Eagle Staff carriers, our dignitaries, and our flag carriers. So ladies and gentlemen, if you can please put your hands together for Eagle Staff carrier, Shantae Begay from Red Mesa, Arizona. <laughs> Carrying in the Treaty 4 flag, ladies and gentlemen, Chief Cadmus DeLorme from Cowessis First Nation and First Nations University of Canada alumni. 
Carrying in our Saskatchewan flag, his honor, the Honorable Russ Morasti, Lieutenant Governor of Saskatchewan, accompanied by uh, her honor, Donna Morasti, as well. I believe I've seen her there. Carrying in our Union Jack, representing our treaties and, uh, and our relationship with that, Constable Dale MacArthur, Indigenous Recruitment Liaison Officer for Regina Police Services. <laughs> Carrying in the Canadian flag, ladies and gentlemen, Sergeant Philip Ironstand, the RCMP. At this time as well, we're going we're gonna to acknowledge some of our dignitaries and first and foremost, the reason why all of us are gathered in this beautiful space here, I want to introduce uh, Dr. Jacqueline Ottman, that's her real name. I also want to uh, introduce uh, Marjorie uh, pa Kui Chan, uh, that's also uh, uh, Jackie's mom. So uh, Marjorie, you're my auntie. I'm gonna adopt you now. Also, uh, uh, her husband, Pat Ottman. Yeah. And the best looking kids in the world are also here as well. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, Pat and uh, uh, um, our, our, our new president's children here, uh, Cole Ottman and Shaque Ottman. Let's give them a round of applause. Also, Uncle George Casius, he's here as well. Yeah, there he is back there. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, in our grant, we had uh, our Chair of the Board of Governors for First Nations University of Canada, Loretta Pete Lambert. <laughs> Elder Maria Campbell. <laughs> Dr. Bob Casius, Vi Vice President Academic and Pro Tem President. Jason Wong, Vice President Academic and, uh, sorry, Vice President Finance and Administration. Our elders, Judy Pelly and Gilbert Qstep. Also dancing in and sharing uh, that beautiful gift of dance, we have Connie Star Blanket, jingle dress dancer from Star Blanket Cree Nation and First Nations University alumni. Let's give her a round of applause. Also, Kaylee Star Blanket, Star Blanket, traditional dancer from Star Blanket Cree Nation and current First Nation University student. Also dancing in our grand entry here, we had our student associa uh, association presidents from the Northern Campus, Krista Hatfield. Let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> Hillary Lambert from Saskatoon Campus. And Amanda Leader from Regina Campus. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is our grand entry delegation. Let's give them one big round of applause. We also want to just say a special thank you. Can I ask to uh, thank you, Kelsey Wavell and the Red Dog Singers, for those songs and for honoring Dr. Ottman and her family. We want to say thank you to that drum. We can't do this without those drum, without those songs. So hi hi. Can I ask tanka? Hi hi. At this time, we're going to ask all of our dignitaries if you can make your way to your seats. And we want to say thank you to our Eagle Staff Carriers, and uh, we'll call you later on. All right, so at this time, I'm going to turn it over to my co MC, Krista. Thank you, Chris, for guiding us through the grand entry. Wasn't that a beautiful sight to witness, everyone? 
It is a great honor to be asked to co MC alongside Chris today. As a representative of the student body of the Northern Campus in Prince Albert, I'm happy to be here with you all to bring the order of ceremony underway. I want to give a special welcome to Dr. Ottman's family. Your presence to date is heartfelt, and we're happy you're here to experience this monumental occasion with her. Welcome to his honor, the Honorable Russ Morasti, Governor of, Lieutenant Governor of Saskatchewan, and her honor, honor Donna Morasti, guests, dignitaries, elders, Board of Governors, students, staff, and everyone watching through the live stream today. Oh, okay. As a new, uh, I'm a new faculty member here at First Nations University of Canada. It's an honor to be a part of this installation uh, ceremony. It's been over 20 years since the university appointed uh, a woman into the president's role. And we gather here today to acknowledge and honor an extraordinarily accomplished individual, Dr. Jackie Ottman, Jacqueline Ottman. motong. During the installation ceremony, Dr. Ottman will, be, uh, will, will officially be installed as the new president for First Nations University of Canada, take an oath of office from the Board of Governors, chair, and will be recognized traditionally through prayer, blessings, smudging, and traditional gifts. Academic colleagues and associates are part of today's ceremony to receive Dr. Ottman into a new leadership role. Um, so at, at this is, an important, this is an important part to recognize, is that when we do things as Indigenous people, there's one thing that we can do as we recognize and we install a, a, a president, but the ceremony of doing it and the prayers and the pipe, all of that solidify that and make that connection to Creator, and it's such an amazing, uh, an amazing thing. Um, so we're really happy to be, the, be a part of that. Uh, so, Ladies and gentlemen, um, what we're going to do at this time is uh, we're going to do, I believe, the declaration. Um, if, if Bonnie is correct on there, we're going to move into the declaration part of our, our event. Um, so, yeah. You know, I'm making all of these mistakes. I mean, uh, that's a good way to do it. But the reason why I'm making it is because of my Kona Cadmus Delorme, Chief Cadmus. He messed me all up, you know. He wanted to read certain things and do things a certain way. And no, just kidding. I wanted to tease him there. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, um, we wanted to invite Elder Maria Campbell. Um, she has known Dr. Oppmann in various capacities. And I'd like to ask Elder Campbell to now speak uh, of her rapport with Dr. Uh, Dr. Ottman. So we're going to call her up. And if you don't know uh, Maria Campbell, you've been living under a rock uh, for many, many years. <laughs> uh, she is a Jedi master, a, an amazing orator, an amazing writer, and just an amazing uh, indigenous woman all around. And we're so grateful and thankful that she's going to be coming up and sharing some of these uh, really important words. So ladies and gentlemen, please, if you can, give uh, uh, Maria Campbell a big round of applause. This is a special and a beautiful day, this October 15th, 2021. I can't even begin to stress enough how beautiful and special a day it is. Today, you're installing an Indigenous woman, Anishinaabekwil, to lead the First Nations University of Canada. Today, you who chose Jackie, Dr. Ottman, 
and us who will witness this installation began the biggest change in truth and reconciliation, and that's Gueska Stasuin, putting things to right among us that were torn apart by colonialism and colonization. I don't know how many of you have, uh, have lived this. I'm kind of old, but maybe some of you remember that when we were children, there was always a, a swing in our houses where there would be a baby, and most of us slept in one room with our parents nearby. And we usually had a granny or an auntie that, that shared the room with us. And we would hear a song. We'd hear songs, lullabies that they would sing to us as little children and, uh, and swing us, rock us. And some of you uh, heard that. And many of you, it kept us warm and protected us in residential school. And I think about those grandmothers and those mothers and those, those women who were the first educators of our people. I remember my grandmother singing that song. And she'd rock us, and all of us would fall asleep, feeling safe and protected. And those were the first words we heard when she'd tell stories at night and sing her songs. And she protected us from all of the things that might hurt us. And when I say that we're putting things to right, it's acknowledging that it was those women who were the keepers of education and knowledge in our homes and our communities. Their voices and their language was the first thing that we heard as babies and as young children. And those are the things that nourished us and protected us when we had to go away and protected many of us. And, um, We're acknowledging those women today when we choose, or we ch we've chosen a, an indigenous woman to be our president. I can't, uh, as I say, even tell you how proud and, and strong I feel. Jackie is a very capable woman. She has all the attributes our Kokums told us about and told us that we needed to be good leaders. And I'm sure that all of us who are women, especially older women, remember our grannies telling us that. To be kind and generous, be kind and generous to everybody. To be gentle, Jackie is very gentle. She's courageous, and she's deeply grounded in her Anishinaabe, her Anishinaabe Muin. She truly is Anishinaabe Okoe. This is not going to be an easy road. We all know that. And the biggest enemy will not be out there among Mumuniawak. The enemy will be among us. Her appointment means change, and that means that we have to chase out and destroy the colonizer inside of us. And that's not going to be easy, and it won't happen overnight. It's about truth and reconciliation in ourselves and with each other. Learning to really love ourselves and each other again in a good way. And there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that this won't happen. And I really believe that having a woman in this role, leading 
the education and the change that needs to happen will change everything for us and for our children and the children of future generations. And I said, Jackie is a, a strong and courageous woman. She's gentle, she's kind, she's generous, she's very smart, and she's not in a big rush. She'll take her time. And I hope that you give her lots of time to do that. And this change is going to happen because we love our children and we love our future generations. And I wished I had stronger and wiser words to say, but I, I don't know how to do that except to tell Jackie that I love her and respect her and honor her. And I love our people and I love our children. Hi, hi, merci. Uh, man, you know, this is, uh, this is one of our uh, long-time Indigenous customs. You know, it's, it's, not, uh, it's always really difficult to stand up and talk about yourself and, and brag about yourself. It's not customary for Indigenous people to do that. So we ask our relatives, we ask the people that know us to do that on our behalf. And uh, to, for Elder Marie uh, Campbell to do that, uh, is everything that she spoke was truth. Everything she spoke was, uh, was genuine. So let's give her another round of applause and thank you very much. As an Indigenous Educational Institute, the Customized Declaration of Office recognizes the vision and mission of the First Nations University of Canada and the fundamental leadership for the students and Indigenous education. At this time, I'd like to ask Loretta Pete Lambert, Chair, Board of Governors, and Dr. Ottman to come to the podium to confirm the Declaration of Office. I'm going to take the mask off here for a bit. I have the pleasure of uh, declaring the office for the president this morning, but I'm going to deviate from the agenda here for now. This morning I saw, saw images of what my history has been, and my history was I worked for the Saanich people in British Columbia, and I saw some carvings that I used to really appreciate. And I even wore my earrings. I didn't know that they were everybody sort of BC, BC images here that I saw. And the reason why I want to um, deviate from the agenda is I want, I want you in, in Saanich territory in the Victoria area we used to raise our hands to people that we think deserve our honor and this morning I want to raise our hands to Bob Casius. He's done a great job in leading us to where we are today. We have been searching for a president and here we are finally. Somebody has accepted our service is, she is uh, more than happy to come to our First Nations University of Canada, but please stand and I want to raise my hands to Bob Casius. Thank you, Bob. I really appreciate the work you've done for us as interim president. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to ask you to go to the next one. I'm going to ask you to go to the next one. I'm going to ask you to go to the next one. I'm going to ask you to learn from other people by the words they speak. So don't ever forget to listen to narratives and stories from other people. Your spirit will teach you the words that they share with you and make you be a better person. Today, I am so honored to be here to be able to declare the office of the president for Dr. Ottman. And we're going to, I, I will stay with my script now and I'll follow the words here. So Jackie, come forward, please. Thank you. 
As chair of the First Nations um, University Board of Governance, I get to do the honor of declaring you and asking you to affirm your commitment to be a leader. Dr. Jackie Ottman, do you confirm your commitment to be a leader that serves with Indigenous people and communities to lead in a good way and with the good intentions to the First Nations University of Canada by showing your dedication, commitment, and Indigenous education by affirming the following? And then I'm going to now ask her. Jacqueline Ottman, Ms. Oweko Me Guk Pamamotam. I've been having you know, practice with that. Do you agree to perform the responsibility of the Office of the President of the First Nations University of Canada as guided by the Indigenous elders, traditional knowledge, keepers, and the Indigenous community, staff, faculty, and most important, sorry, am I, sorry to, to the students to commit to uphold the integrity of the university by leading with good intentions in the best interest of the students, staff, faculty, and the elders of the university. Chair Pete Lambert, the Board of Governors, Universe, First Nations University of Canada, I commit to leaving, leading and serving in a good way alongside the university's Indigenous and non-Indigenous communities to create a strong inclusive, safe, and welcoming educational environment for our community. I will work in the best interest of the First Nations University of Canada, and I will continually seek innovative and traditional ways to provide meaningful, quality, educational opportunities for our Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples that attend this university. I will be mindful of the responsibilities that this position holds and will walk with care, honesty, truth, dignity, and integrity, knowing that what I do, I ultimately do for our Indigenous students today and in the future. I will be a good leader for them, striving every day to work in a good way. So on behalf of the Board of Governors, I now proclaim you, Dr. Jackie Ottman, a Shinabe from the Fishing Lake First Nation, the President of the First Nations University of Canada, and with all the responsibilities that the office holds. Thank you so much, Jackie. <laughs> we're, we're going to have the elders come forward now. And do the honors.
Ladies and gentlemen, um, I, what you just witnessed here uh, is part of our, our, our traditions and our ways of doing things as Indigenous people. And uh, as I was sitting on a, standing on the side listening to this, and our elders speaking to our new president in an Indigenous language that existed on this earth for thousands of years, that is truly an amazing, amazing thing to hear and see. So grateful and thankful for this ability. Our elders here, they wrapped up our president with a gift. And when we think about gifts, we have to think about gifts through an Indigenous lens and what that means. These are not gifts as monetary uh, agreements, but they're gifts coming from us to appreciate and to guide and to help and to hold all of us as we move forward. And I myself, my grandmother who raised me, I seen her wrapped in a shawl every time an important event happened, and it was really, truly an amazing gift there. So let's give our, let's give our, um, our elders a nice big round of applause at this time for that. All of us are servants as we work in these institutions and these educational spaces and places. And we're servants to the students that come here. None of the work that we do exists without them. So in order to honor that, uh, the purpose of the university and what we're doing here and, and the role that our new president, Dogimao, our, our leader in Dogimao is gonna be doing is for them. And we wouldn't exist without these students. So I ask the First Nations University Board of Governors, student representatives, Krista Hatfield, Hillary Lambert, and Amanda Leader, they're going to present this gift of a star blanket to President Ottman. And I want to share a story while they're, while they're coming up and they're getting ready here. We're going to ask uh, our, our President Ottman to stand here. But I was taught you know, uh, by my father and a story about the importance of this. Long ago, what this blanket represents, it represents that buffalo robe and the thousands of buffalo that roamed on these plains. We would gift that to people to keep them warm for clothing, for shelter, and carry that robe wherever they go. And this blanket represents that. And there's a star on it. And, and, and as Anishinaabe people, as indigenous people of this territory, we know that our ancestors come from that space. So this, this gift here from these students is a, represent, a representation of our ancestors and a connection and understanding that this use was a buffalo robe. And, and they gift this to you in the best way from those students to you. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give them a round of applause. Now, if, uh, if Dr. Ottman was non-Indigenous, I would instruct her that what she's supposed to do with that blanket is hang it on her, on her uh, living room window, you know, so that... Uh, <laughs> but she's Indigenous, so she knows already what to do with that blanket. Um, so um, also, you know, at this time, like I said earlier, when we were starting the day, we started with those prayers. We started with that connection to our Creator. And this continues on, that's what this is. This act of a public, a public uh, event is, is meant and intended for people to witness the beauty of what we're doing here, especially when we're bringing in a leader. It needs to be a public event The people need to see and witness this. So that's why this is happening in this way, you know, is that, is that we want to do that. And it is also customary for the honored individual the reason why we do these and we bring them forward as our leaders to receive the guidance and blessing from the elders for this new path that uh, is going to be walking after today and, and into, into leading our ways. Uh, this blessing ceremony, we're going to ask that, uh, that YouTube and uh, uh, the social media pieces that we not film this and we're going to call up um, we're going to call up our elders, Judy and Gilbert, to offer this blessing uh, of smudge to President Ottman. And they will, they, will, uh, they will do this. They said it a little bit already, uh, but we wanted to do this as well at this time. 
Uh, so we'll, we'll turn it over to them and uh, ask for uh, everybody's uh, kind reverence at this time. Congratulations, President Ottman. In the presence of your colleagues, distinguished guests, elders, students, and your family, you are now affirmed as official president of the First Nations University of Canada. All right. Okay, I have an uh, issue that I need to... No, just kidding. All right. <laughs> now that she's official. Uh, just kidding, of course. Thank you very much. Awesome. Amazing. You know, a lot of times um, we, don't, we, don't, we don't realize the, um, how, how, how uh, amazing that is. And I apologize for those watching online, but to smell uh, smudge you know, in, a, in this space and, and knowing that we can do that, what we've done all our lives is, is just an amazing thing. So thank you again for those elders. Such an amazing thing and the words you've expressed, um, it, it just, uh, it's just an amazing thing. So uh, President Ottman, uh, you can now sit down and enjoy the rest of the event so you don't have to uh, do too much there. Uh, but we're gonna have a performance and we're gonna bring forward our dancers, we're gonna bring forward our Red Dog uh, singers and dancers as part of this. And when we gather, when we do these dances, it's important to know that we do these in celebration. We do these as part of our way of life. And, and this powwow and this dance, especially in our area of Treaty 4, in this space that we're in right now, it really allowed us to continue on and reconnect and stay strong with our, with our indigenous identity and allowed for a bridge to that identity to continue. So what we're gonna do at this time, we're gonna ask our dancers to come make their way into the front and they're gonna dance for us and each of them are gonna do these different dances. And as we do this, I think it's uh, important that we start, ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to ask um, our jingle dress dancer, Connie Star Blanket, if she can make her way forward at this time and, and stand in the middle here. <clears throat> the reason why I wanted to start with this is that our new president is proud Anishinaabe Kwe. She's a proud uh, indigenous woman. This dress that you see here, this jingle dress, comes from that nation, from those people, from Anishinaabe people. This, des this dress right here is a blessing for each and every one of us. In the early 1900s, ladies and gentlemen, there was a pandemic that occurred across the world, and it was called the Spanish flu. And a beautiful woman had a dream about this healing dance, had a dream to come forward, to bring this dance forward to heal each and every one of us. And they put this dress on, and they got out here, and they danced. And lo and behold, this, this healing started to happen across our nations. And I wanted to start that as a connection to our new president and where she comes from. So ladies and gentlemen, I bring you Connie Star Blanket from the Star Blanket Cree Nation. She's gonna be dancing this beautiful jingle dress dance for all of us to start. So Red Dog, anytime you're ready, go ahead.
Aha, give him a big round of applause. Awesome. Thank you, Connie. Beautiful sidestep dance. Oh, man, that's wicked. W-I-K-K-I-D. All right, so here we go. We're going to call forward our next dancer. We're going to call forward uh, Kaylee Star Blanket. Uh, Kaylee, we're going to ask you to come forward. Kaylee, remember, she's a student, a current student here from the Star Blanket Cree Nation, part of the Red Dog Dance Troupe, international dance troupe of the world. And ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, the beauty and grace of our indigenous women is represented in this dance. Uh, I've known Kaylee, I've, I've, I've seen her as a champion dancer, but also know that she's a role model and a, and a powerful student and advocate for indigenous education and, 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 her, and her dreams as she moves forward. So ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna ask Red Dog to sing a beautiful woman's traditional song. Kaylee is in her fourth year of Indigenous business and public admin and Indigenous fine arts. And it says here that she is, because of the pandemic, she's the longest uh, reigning First Nation University Spring Celebration Powell Princess. Let's give her a round of applause. I, I actually don't think that's true. Bonnie Rock Thunder actually served as a Powell Princess for uh, for this powwow for about 15 years unofficially so <laughs> However, the, the last dancer that we're going to call forward at this time we're going to invite him forward his name is Shante Begay and uh, he comes to us from Red Mesa Arizona and you know what happens to uh, these really handsome American men is that uh, they come to our territory and they get entrapped and they get uh, mesmerized by our beautiful indigenous women in this area. And uh, that's what happened to this man. And uh, he, I know he's officially in a good space because his father-in-law last night called him my boy. So, you know, <laughs> I was teasing him and this is my nephew here. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the chicken dance. Uh, is a beautiful dance. It's a dance of pride. It's a dance of showing. And uh, here it is, Shante Begay, take it away.
Let's give him a big round of applause. Man, that's awesome. Holy smokes. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Like I said earlier, you know, we can't do anything without our singers, without our drum. So let's give Red Dog Singers and the Red Dog Drum a big round of applause as well. Every time that I uh, every time that I see this or we do these um, do these performances, I'm reminded that um, there was a time when we weren't allowed to do these uh, when they were illegal for a lot of our relatives and you know people like my uh, my great grandfather Charles Ryder Jr. putting tar paper on the windows of his home on a Cinnaboyne Reserve and doing these and keeping these alive. You know it just brings me pr uh, so it makes me so proud to do these at our events to dance and I'm reminded of those beautiful things. Uh, so this, at this time, uh, we're going uh, to ask that those that have been asked to uh, help with the presentations and to do some of those speeches, uh, now it's your time, uh, Kona Chief, you know. Now is his time. He's going to get up here. Uh, but uh, we're going to ask those people to get ready, and I want to uh, invite back up here uh, my co MC Krista, and uh, she's going to start us off with, uh, with these beautiful presentations. Thanks so much, Chris. And so to start the presentation of greetings today, I'd like to now welcome his honor, the Honorable Russ Morasti, Lieutenant Governor of Saskatchewan, to bring greetings to President Ottman. Good morning. Ladies and gentlemen, special guests, leaders, community leaders, students, faculty, and of course, our special guest today, President Ackman. Not in Askumogme no Gaitia Gigisip Gawi Samichik, the Wit of Mawauta, Miguapi, Upenachiko Spogana. I want to thank the elders for inviting us to sit with them this morning as they raise the pipes to, to start this day in, a, in the proper way. Ogome no Nigamog, the singers, Anime Hitachik, the dancers. Just as an aside, I just. Uh, as you go along on your journeys, you, you have some pleasant surprises. And uh, I just wanted to make special mention of a couple of the singers in the drum, drum group. I go way back to my RCMP days when I was stationed with their father in, in Roster in Saskatchewan. And uh, just how time flies, it's just a reminder of how time goes by so quickly. But certainly uh, nice to see them this morning. Universities play a crucial role in our society. Scholars-led research that impacts our lives, our planet, and educators mentor and inspire students who are future leaders. First Nations University does this all, and much more. Since it was founded in 1976, then known as the Saskatchewan Indian Federated College, this institution has enabled Indigenous people to protect and preserve Indigenous history, heritage, and knowledge. To share this knowledge is so important. Knowledge is so powerful as we know it, but to share it is even more powerful. The institution has also provided critical support that has enabled Indigenous students to succeed. Again, you know, when I think about 1976, I came to Regina for the first time in 1976, October the 5th to be exact, to join the RCMP. It led me on a totally different path. And I didn't know, to be honest with you, at the time that this institution was being created. And so over those years, I guess we've both evolved 
and certainly I hope in a good way. I know for the institution for sure. I want to thank the many dedicated and visionary individuals who have provided leadership over the years on the Board of Governors, the administrators, faculty, and of course, the guiding elders. Thank you for your commitment to First Nations University of Canada. I also want to acknowledge at this time, although we did, Dr. Bob Casius for his service as interim president. Thank you, Bob, for your leadership and for your support and participation in the discussions as I worked to create with uh, survivors a residential school memorial here in Regina at Government House. Dr. Ottman, please accept my sincere congratulations on your appointment as president. Thank you, and you make us proud for taking on this work. You bring much experience and expertise to this role. Your extensive background as an educator, academic, and administrator will enable you to provide strong and inspiring leadership. Please accept my very best wishes as you continue this important work. So in closing, as the Queen's representative here in Saskatchewan, it is customary for me to bring greetings on behalf of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, or Queen of Canada. Elizabeth II. Oh, um, <clears throat> it's always uh, it's always amazing to hear his honor uh, honorable Russ Morasti uh, come up here and share our languages and uh, just the uh, wealth of experience on there. Get that thumb in for uh, all that you do. Hi hi, thank you for that. Let's give him another round of applause. Uh, so our next uh, our next presenter, our next presentation and greetings here. Every time that I introduce a little piner, I always tell a story because I grew up uh, in Poundmaker, right beside the right beside Little Pine, and there's a fence that goes right through uh, the border. Uh, uh, really, uh, you know those old school barbed wire fences, and I used to ask, you know, what is that? Is that for the border? And Poundmaker people would say, you know, that's to keep the little piners in Little Pine, and Little Pine people would say that's to keep the Poundmaker people in Poundmaker. Uh, but it's uh, I've known I've known um, um, Loretta Pete, our chair, for many years, and uh, she's going to bring greetings as uh, as our board chair uh, for First Nations University of Canada, and, and just an amazing individual and uh, someone that a lot of us uh, in Indigenous education and uh, in, in systems and, and different things look up to. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce uh, Loretta Pete Lambert. Thank you, Chris, for the kind words. As he stated, I'm from the Little Pine Cree Nation, and I'm the chair of the First Nations University, and I'd like to acknowledge uh, some of the other board members. I, I, there's one for sure, but the, the board members, where's Yvette? Where did I see you? There you are. Yvette Arcand is here as one of the board, board members. And uh, thank you again for joining us this morning. The Board of Governors is made up of a, a collections of great minds, I'll say. I happen to be the one that they chose to be the chair. And I want to thank you all for coming, all the elders, the chiefs, the Board of Governors, all the dignitaries, the colleagues, and the viewers that are online here right now. And uh, I also want to acknowledge that we are in the, the territory of the Star Blanket Cree Nation, Timga uh, and that's how they call it in the, the Cree language. And uh, I acknowledge the fact that this is now status land. This is a very significant step that the Board of Governors and Star Blanket Reserve have been able to achieve. And the, the status land that you sit on, of course, is, is woven with the, the history of the treaty people. Also, I'd like to acknowledge that this is also the land of the Métis Nation, and, the, and we have also campuses that are, in, that are in, located in other uh, territories, like the Treaty 6 territory. We have the Saskatoon campus, and we have the Northern campus in Prince Albert. And uh, we, the Board of Governors, on behalf of the Board of Governors, I'd like to congratulate Dr. Ottman for like considering the service he's got, she's going to provide to First Nations University of Canada and also to, which means all of Canada. 
and also internationally. Because First Nations University is also uh, a university that not only attracts only local Canadians, but also international students. So we have a very huge uh, audience to, to thank for jo Dr. Jo Jackie Ottman that she's going to be providing that support. And we're very excited to be working with her. And uh, like I said, we've, it's taken us a couple years to find just a person with the right, uh, the, the right combination of skills, uh, you know, everything that comes along with the package as president. So we're very proud of our accomplishment, uh, the Board of Governors. And I thank you, um, Honorable Russ Marasti, and your wife, Her Honor, Donna, thank you for coming and taking the time to come and express the words that you have given us today. And I also want to uh, thank the elders for the blessings that they have given us today in, in this audience. But most importantly, we had uh, Elder William Radfoot was uh, raising the pipe uh, so we can have this event in a good way. And he's always in the background supporting us and giving us the, the prayers to give us uh, the, uh, the, the success that we have all the time. So, and I thank you and uh, go home and tell people about the installation of Dr. Jackie Ottman as the president of First Nations University. Everything is going to be better and better than Bob. No, I'm just kidding, Bob. <laughs> but you know, Really, I, I, like to, I like to bug Bob because he's actually a really great, you know, leader also, but he denied our invitation to be president, but Jackie is going to do better. Thank you, Jackie. <laughs> Thank you again for coming. Have a good day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lorette. It's really nice as in student governance leadership that we do get the opportunity to attend the Board of Governors to see action, see conversations, and just see what we'll be doing later in life as we leave the university. And now I'm very pleased to welcome our next speaker because um, Dr. Bob Casius is someone who has led us in a lot of difficult situations. He's always ready to give advice, support. He's very busy, but he always answers our phone calls, and that's very appreciated. So please um, welcome Bob Casius to the stage, and he's our Vice President, Academic, and Protrum President. Thank you for that introduction there. So uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, our elder for lifting the pipe this morning. And it's always, a, it's always a blessing that we get to have ceremony here at the university and, and start all the things that we do with ceremony so often. So I appreciate our Kiteyak, uh, William Ratford, for lifting up that, uh, the pipe. I also want to acknowledge uh, His Honorable Russ Morasti for for coming here and, and giving us greetings and, and welcoming uh, our new president, Jackie Ottman, to, uh, to her job. We appreciate that, sir, you and your wife. Uh, you know, I, uh, I want to also, I, I wouldn't be able to acknowledge and welcome all of, all of you here today. There's many dignitaries, people that we've worked with, uh, partners to, in the work that we do here at the university. I want to welcome all of you today. I, I want to say, uh, uh, Anin, and welcome to my to my aunt, to my relative, uh, Mar uh, Marjorie. She's uh, she's my she's my aunt, and she's Jackie's mom. My uncle, my uncle George, my aunt and Ola. It's good to see my relatives here. It's good to see my relatives from Fishing Lake as we're uh, transitioning from this uh, old guy that doesn't do things as well as uh, Jackie's going to do them. But you know, I was, uh, uh, I was uh, looking around at all the guests and, uh, and looking at uh, you know, the, the, the ceremony that we're having. It's, a, it's an amazing day today. It's, a, it's an honor for me to be able to, uh, to come up here and, and, and bring some greetings. I just want to say a couple of things. You know, the, uh, when, I, when I first came to university many years ago now, I had uh, one of the first classes that I took. We had a, uh, a book that was given to us to read, and it was Half-Breed by Elder Maria Campbell. 
Many of us uh, have read that book. Many of us have been inspired by that story. And you know, and, and uh, the inspiration that I got from that, from that book, I, it, I remembered as, as uh, Maria was up here today talking about that, that place of safety and, uh, and, and well-being that she was talking about when she was you know, at home way back and, and you know, swinging and listening to her mom sing. You know, when I uh, first came to the, to the university, I, I, found, I found a place of, of warmth and, and, and welcoming and, and safety, and uh, I made lots of friends here. I, I, you know, um, I made lots of, uh, lots of lifelong friends, uh, not only with the students, not, with instructors, with, with everybody, and, and we had so many, so many good times visiting and talking and chatting, and, and that feeling of family and safety, I think, is something that, that resonates throughout this institution. You know, I, I, I often talk to our alumni and I see the, the, um, they all, their eyes light up and they talk about the stories that they, that, uh, that they have about, uh, about their own experience here. You know, and, and I think that uh, uh, today, today as, we're, as we're going into a new stage in our life as, the, as an institution, it's, an important, it's important to recognize the, the work that, that's been put into this place. You know, uh, more than, uh, one of our speakers uh, described the, the creation of this institution over 45 years ago by the Federation of Sovereign Indigenous Nations. They, uh, the FSIN created the, the SIFC. They created our, our sister institution, the SIIT and SICC many years ago. And you know, there's no other, there's no other group of institutions in Canada like ours here in Saskatchewan. The the province of Saskatchewan has supported the growth, and and our friends at the Advanced Ed, De Deputy Mark McLaughlin, Deputy Minister Mark McLaughlin is here, and a you know, good friend, good supporter, and and just always talks about lifting us up, lifting this institution up, and supporting the work that's necessary here. You know, our, President Keshin, we've had very, very good discussions about, you know, us uh, moving on in a relationship that's very different than we've had in the past here. And, and there's growth and there's change. There's lots of things that we have to be proud of at this institution. Our Kateyak, our elders, we have an elders council. You know, we, uh, we, used, to, we used to have an informal, informal uh, structure where our elders were involved. We've changed that. And we now have an elders council. They help provide advice, guidance to us, and they support our students. They support our board. They support all of us here. And it's a it's an important asset that we have. It was Kiteyuk, and I, I want to acknowledge that this is something that we have at this institution that many other institutions would like to would like to have their own. You know, when you look across the country, is there any other institution, post-secondary institution like ours, that's on reserve? That has 1,300 students that are doing the work that we do every year, over you know graduating over 150 bachelor degrees every year, adding to the you know contributing to the society, contributing to the economy, and also really more importantly contributing to families and community. You know our people are going back to our communities and helping, and it's really really important. So you know I just wanted to make those comments simply because you know today today we're asking Jackie to come here and, and take over. And, 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 and lead us for the next few years. You know, and I've had, I've had incredible support in my, in my, in my time as the, as the president, but in, you know, in my time as senior management. I've had incredible support from all the students, from, from our staff, from, from our faculty. There's so much work that goes into this from, from the federal government, from the provincial government, all of our partners, the Federation of Sovereign Indigenous Nations, all of us have been working together and we are in a very, very incredible place. You know, I, I feel, I felt so much pride listening to our, my, my new colleague here and, and Chris, uh, he needs to learn how to speak wicked though, uh, so <laughs> he needs to learn how to spell that. But uh, he's doing an incredible job and he's, and he's reminding us of the, of the importance of ceremony, of song and dance and, you know, and, and it's uh, all the, all these, all these, uh, these elements that you see here today, you know, installation of a, an Anishinaabe a woman here, uh, you know, to lead us in all the ceremony that we have, it's such an important, an important day for all of us in Saskatchewan. 
you know, we, we should all feel pride of this institution and, and feel pride of what we're seeing here today. So I'm very proud and I, and I welcome all of you. Thank you. All right. Thank you again. You know, um, I appreciate uh, earlier uh, Loretta, uh, Pete Lambert, board chair, uh, got up and you know acknowledged the uh, the work and that Bob has done over his interim time here and doing that so I uh, really appreciate that vision and that work that you've done and put in and allowed us to get to where we are right now so I appreciate that and uh, I won't apologize for making spelling mistakes on the colonizers language yeah <laughs> uh, yeah just kidding yeah just kidding yeah sorry if I offended any colonizers uh, at this time now they were telling me in the back that I was doing okay, you know, and I said, oh, wait, just wait, you know, get me on the mic long enough and I'll, I'll do something. Um, so <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, oh, we got to laugh as uh, that's a good way to do it. So uh, next up here, uh, we wanted to uh, introduce um, Dr. Jeff uh, Keshin. He's the president, president and vice chancellor of the University of Regina. And uh, we want to come uh, ask him to come forward. So ladies and gentlemen, let's give him a nice big round of applause as he brings greetings. He spelt it the way the students spell it. It's all good. <laughs> well, thanks so much to my colleagues at the First Nations University of Canada for the invitation to say a few words on behalf of the University of Regina at this incredibly special occasion. I want to begin with the very respectful acknowledgement that the University of Regina, with its three federated colleges, First Nations University of Canada, Campion, and Luther Colleges, situated in Treaty 4 lands with a presence in Treaty 6. And these, of course, are the traditional territories of the Cree, the Soto, Dakota, Lakota, and, um, and the Nakota peoples, and the homeland of the Métis Nation. Today, these lands continue to be the shared territory of many diverse peoples from near and far. In talking about place in such a way, I cannot help but think of the special place that the First Nations University of Canada occupies at the University of Regina in these territories and indeed in the country. Since its founding in 1976, First Nations University of Canada has espoused, and more than that, has worked tirelessly to realize an incredibly noble vision. Let me read. To enhance the quality of life and to preserve and to protect and to interpret the history and the language and the culture and the artistic heritage of First Nations. Few institutional visions are as concise, are as concrete, are as meaningful and as relevant as this. And I would argue that few people, few people are as qualified as Dr. Jacqueline Alt Ottman, President Jacqueline Altman, to lead the First Nations University of Canada as it works to realize such a vision for all in our country as we pursue truth and reconciliation. In late August, I had the privilege of witnessing President Ottman's firsthand work. And it was by, of course, Zoom, and we're so grateful that we're here in person, as she participated in the University of Regina's annual senior leadership team retreat. And she worked within a group examining, examining ways to enhance reconciliation and equity and diversity and inclusion on all our campuses. President Ottman impressed me very much with her knowledge, with her articulate voice, with her consultative approach, her strong convictions, her humility, and her ability to inspire others. As an historian, I am an historian, who has studied many leaders of the past, the successful and, of course, the less successful, I immediately recognized, as all of us recognized, that President Ottman has all the qualities of a successful leader. It augurs well for the First Nations University of Canada, for its faculty, for its staff, for its students, for the University of Regina as an academic partner, and for the wider communities that surround and support all of us. As President Ottman begins her tenure, First Nations University of Canada is on an incredibly solid footing, a partner with us, in part because of the dedicated work, of course, of Dr. Bob Casius over the past couple of years in his capacity as acting president as we work to finalize a new MOU with our partners here. I want to thank Dr. Casius and those who have worked with them for all they have done and continue to do 
to ensure the success of this great institution. President Ottman, on behalf of my colleagues at the University of Regina, I want to offer our congratulations, our heartfelt congratulations, and our very best wishes on your installation. I know that you will find the University of Regina to be a dedicated partner in our more than four decade long shared academic mission of teaching, of research, of service to our community. Thank you for your commitment to the First Nations University of Canada and everyone that it serves. I look forward to the opportunity of working closely with you and learning from you in the years to come. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much to Dr. Uh, Jeff Kishan. It really is an act of reconciliation to see that partnership and that unification that we have with the U of R and the First Nations University together. And so now I would like to direct you all to the screen on the side here because we do have Chief Michael Starr coming to us on video today. Um, so we are blessed that he's able to send a nice message ahead for us. Good afternoon. My name is Michael Starr. I'm the chief of the Star Blanket Cree Nation. I'm very honored to welcome to the First Nations University of Canada, the new president, Dr. Jacqueline Ottoman. Welcome to this beautiful institution that you're now part of. And I acknowledge that we're also a part of other institutions in Prince Albert and in Saskatoon. But we house the institute that where the First Nation University was built in Regina. So I acknowledge that and I welcome you. I'm encouraged by what you're now a part of, what our ancestors wanted our young people our young indigenous people, and even our, our uh, brothers and sisters from uh, the non-indigenous uh, society, that you will take them, you will mold them, and you will instill in them what our ancestors truly wanted them to understand and to learn. And that's the indigenous way of life our ancestral way of life, along with the non-Indigenous ways of things that our society um, brings as well, the different industries, if you will, the different administrations, if you will, all those kind of things that we have to uh, be aware of, the health systems, the education systems, all those things that our young people aspire to and to receive their degrees, to receive their doctorates, their PhDs, all those good things. And I believe that you are prepared to do so. So I welcome you in a good way. Hi, hi. All right, thank you very much, uh, Chief Michael Starr of Star Blanket Cree Nation. Uh, for that uh, video message. Uh, at this time, um, one of the things that was uh, really important in this uh, installation, uh, can we talk about the word installation? I mean, uh, Dr. Ottman, our president, she's not a statue yet, <laughs> but uh, yeah. anyways, I know that's the word we're using, but uh, this installation here, she wanted to make sure that uh, our students were represented and at this time, we're going to call up uh, one of our student presidents here. Uh, she wanted to say just a couple of words and also present uh, something here to, uh, to our president. So I'm going to call up uh, Hillary Lambert, uh, Saskatoon Campus Board of Governors student representative. Good morning, everyone. My name is Hilary Lambert, and I am from Flying Dust First Nation. 
I'm the president of Saskatoon Student Association. What a beautiful day for an event like this today. On behalf of my fellow FNUNF student peers, professors, faculty members, we give a big welcome to Dr. Jackie Ottman. We look forward to working with you and we are so proud to have an Indigenous woman in this position. So on behalf of everyone, here is our gift. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Oh, very cool. When I when I uh, I met uh, Hillary last night, I uh, asked her, "Oh, hey, how's it going?" You know, I said, uh, "Are you speaking tomorrow?" She's like, "I'm the gift giver." Oh, yeah. So, thank you for that awesome uh, presentation and those nice words. Let's give her another round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Man, we're on time. Huh? We're just a, like we're just rolling. I mean, I, how is this happening at an indigenous event? Yeah, it's because I have some Scottish blood in me. I think is uh, keeping me on this uh, clock time. Any, anyway, <laughs> anyways, uh, uh huh? Yeah. If you fight for me, well, you got to kill the English. Uh, so there it is. That's as far as I get in uh, recognizing the Scottish uh, uh, piece. Uh. But uh, at this time, um, you know, uh, we want to uh, uh, take this time and do this introduction of our president. And uh, this is a really cool, uh, uh, cool thing that we do, and it's really important that we do this as, uh, as we introduce our leader, as we introduce them to the, to the people, to the world that's out there. And uh, to do this, it's my honor and my privilege uh, to, to welcome you know, a very, very uh, strong advocate uh, for Indigenous rights and a strong advocate for uh, a powerful Indigenous leader for his community. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, please uh, help me welcoming uh, Kawas' First Nation and First Nation University alumni, Chief Cadmus DeLorme, to bring official introduction of President Ottman. Naskaman, Tapwe Poko Mio Kisagao. It's a beautiful day today. I'm so honored to be standing in the First Nations Veterans Memorial Tipi here at the First Nations University of Canada. I want to give uh, honor to our MCs, Krista Hatfield. You did an amazing job. Thank you very much. Chris. I'm so happy that the university is signing your fine option hours to be our MC today. <laughs> I give greetings to why we're all here today, Dr. Ottman, to our Kateyak, our ones that started us off in prayer this morning. It's a beautiful day because prayer just happened. To our Board of Governors, to the entire staff of First Nations University of Canada, because we're a family, to Dr. Keshen and the University of Regina and our friends, Lieutenant Governor Nanaskam, we're so proud to hear our language being spoken on behalf of our Queen. Thank you very much. I once went to school here many, many moons ago. And to be standing here and introducing our next president, I just have a quick couple comments. I came in this university in 2008, excited, res kid, didn't really know where I was going, but I just knew I was destined for this place. This teepee behind me was my number one classroom, the ceremonial teepee, Roland, Aroskapios is still my helper today in many things. The many elders that I got to sit in that room with and learn is what guides me today as a leader of my community and my First Nation. I got to be in Dr. Bob Casey's his class as a business student. And I like to roast him because I know he likes to roast me, so 
Anybody wants to know how to hang up their star blanket as a curtain, the fishing lake style? <laughs> Go see Dr. Bob Casius. I'm 39 years old, and I just, I just have something to tell Dr. and President. I'm 39 years old today, and I'm reflecting. A 39 years old residential school survivor and my mother, Charlotte, knew that she had to show her family the importance of the treaty right to education. And at the age of 39, my mother attended the Saskatchewan Indian Federated College. As a little guy at the time, I couldn't figure out why my mom left the reserve for four days at a time and why my dad raised me on deer meat for four days at a time. <laughs> As a little kid, I went to my mom's convict, her graduation. And I remember this as a little kid running in this big auditorium theater. While she was up on stage, I was up on the second level where the little kids are not supposed to be. And my mom graduated. And she taught all her kids that university is what we must do in order to change our ways, in order to strengthen ourselves and to get stronger. I'm the second generation to graduate from the First Nations University of Canada. And residential school has done some things to our kinship that we're now rebuilding. And I have a five-year-old daughter. Her name's Callie. And I know it would be my mom and my honor that Callie be the third generation to come to First Nations University of Canada one day. And that's why we do this. The last four months have been pretty tough on Indigenous people in this country. It's validation, and it's tough validation, because this institution has been teaching this and telling this truth since 1976. And to many Canadians now, that shield is down, and our Canadian friends are now admitting, I don't know much. I need to learn more. President Ottman, this is the perfect time for you to be our leader of First Nations University of Canada because this institution is going to lead Canada. Every proud Canadian should be walking through these hallways to know that truth. And that is why it is such an important day today. And it's such an honor to introduce our next president of the First Nations University of Canada. Dr. Jacqueline Ottman is a Nishinaabe, so do we say in Saskatchewan, from Fishing Lake First Nation. Prior to her academic career, Jackie was an elementary high school teacher and principal. She remains an engaged scholar along, alongside her responsibilities as senior academic leader. While at the University of Calgary, she was coordinator of the First Nations, Métis, and Inuit Undergraduate Teacher Education Program and director of Indigenous Education Initiatives within the Workland School of Education. She also co-chaired the Workland School of Education Indigenous Strategy alongside the Provost, the University-wide Indigenous Strategy. After her time with the University of Saskatchewan as Professor and Vice Provost Indigenous Engagement, Jackie Ottman is now home and is being appointed as the President of the First Nations University of Canada. President Ottman has been recognized as an international researcher, advocate and change maker whose purpose is to transform practices inclusive of, inclusive of Indigenous leadership methodologies and pedagogies. Jacqueline is driven to create schools and communities that foster a deeper sense of belonging and appreciation for Indigenous peoples, our histories, stories, ways of knowing and being. Dr. Ottman is also the first Indigenous person to become President of the Canadian Society for the Study of Education. It is with great honour that I call to the mic 
Dr. Jacqueline Ottman, President of First Nations University of Canada. Jim Iglitch, Chief DeLorme. I am home. He said, I am home. Anin Dinamaganak, Mizawek Migok Pepa, Motang Dizanakas. No chicken, no zayaning, don't ji. In get chicken, don't come. Get Jim Iglitch to um, the elders this morning who lifted the pipe to ensure that we're beginning this day in a good way. And also to the many people that have spent many hours uh, putting and organizing this event today. I'd like to recognize uh, some people, the Honorable Russ Morasti and his wife Donna, Dr. Jeff Keshen, Mark Jerry, Dr. Mark Jerry, who is the uh, president of Luther, uh, Dr. Sami Hilwia, who is the uh, president of Ta Campion, and there's also some uh, dignitaries here today, uh, Deputy Minister McLaughlin, who is the Minister of Advanced Education, um, Senator Marty Klein is here today, um, Member of Parliament for Regina Wascana, Michael Cram. Um, the Board of Governors, just uh, as um, um, Loretta uh, Pete Lambert mentioned, they, they are uh, such an amazing, amazing group of people. And that comprises of uh, Loretta Pete Lambert, who is our chair, uh, Ken Coates, Yvette Arkand, Edward Ed Morasti, Richard Bordolo, and I would also like to recognize our student association presidents, Amanda Leader, Hilary Lambert, Krista Hatfield, and our First Nations Elders Council. I have had the, the pleasure and it's been a gift to me to get to know the, the Elders Council of First Nations University of Canada. And I feel uplifted and supported by them. And I've had one of them um, tell me today that I've got 700 years of support. And that's overwhelming. <laughs> We have um, a part of the, the Elders Council is, is William Ratfoot, who is our, our leader, who is our, um, you know, we, he lifted the pipe this morning. Florence Allen, Allen Gilbert Qstep, Judy Pelly, Willie Ermine, Roland Kay, Preston Gardipi, Grace McLeod, Rose Bird, and Mary Lee. And I'd also like to acknowledge Maria Campbell, a mentor, a friend, and also elders, knowledge keepers, Lorna and Eugene Arkand, mentors, friends. And we also have just so many other people here, my family, um, my husband, who I've um, been married to for 34 years, We've been together 38, so. <laughs> my children, my, my son Cole, my daughter Shake, my mom, my mother, my inspiration, Marjorie, 
my nieces, my brothers, my cousins, my uncle, my auntie, and there's so many more that I could, I could, you know, just again, I, I'm just touched by each one of you and know that, that you are filling my heart right now. I've been thinking a lot about the significance of this day and the series of events that have brought us into this room together today. For me, in making decisions, especially life-changing decisions, I look for signs. It might be more of an indigenous practice than, than anything. Oftentimes, signs present themselves in a dream, a nudge, an encouragement from family, friends, a teacher, a high school counselor, a colleague, a boss, a graduate supervisor, a partner. After the opportunity presents itself, I pray. And I'm a bit hy more hyper aware as I wait for affirmation, as I wait for the signs. And there have been a few when it came to making this very important decision to step into the presidency of First Nations University of Canada. For instance, after hoping to have the contract for this position completely signed by Friday, June 18th, in spite of my effort, it was signed on June 21st, National Indigenous Peoples Day. I realized the significance of this convergence. June 21st is a day designated to recognize the accomplishments of Indigenous peoples of these lands and territories and the contributions that we've made to the evolution of Canada. In this respect, we have a lot to celebrate. On this day, and I would hope every day, we have that we, we recognize, we uplift, we celebrate the resiliency, strength, perseverance, complex and sophisticated philosophies, methodologies, pedagogies, and our beautiful cultural traditions, languages, and practices. June 21st is also the summer solstice, the longest day of the year, a day that Indigenous peoples have marked as significant for spiritual reasons. With amazing accuracy, medicine wheels throughout Turtle Island have marked this day for centuries upon centuries. The signing of the contract between myself and First Nations University of Canada Board of Governors on June 21st was affir affirmational for me. Today, in an early morning pipe ceremony, that contract became covenantial. As the pipe was lifted, as the Creator was asked to be present, for, the, for this momentous occasion. Today's ceremony had two other possible dates. Dates that the organizing committee began working towards, but ultimately they weren't realized for one reason or another. The planning committee was very aware and mindful of the unique and limiting situations that the pandemic has placed upon us. Your health and safety has been paramount. In the end, it was decided that October 15th would be the day to ceremonially begin my presidency. Unbeknownst to the committee, today my dad would have turned 77. My dad, Chief Alan Kwechan, was born on October 15th, 1948, in a canvas tent during a snowfall, perhaps much like yesterday's snowfall. Five other people, his parents and three other siblings also lived in that tent. I am humbled 
by how far we have come in one generation. My dad was a leader of Fishing Lake First Nation for a span of 30 years with a, with a few breaks in between. This is quite a feat since elections are held every two years. I watched and witnessed his leadership evolve and his purpose and intention over the years moved from leading for community to leading in a good way with the people because it's creator's God's intention and purpose. Leadership became a very, it became very spiritual for him. My dad was a servant and adaptive leader. In my home office over my desk, I have a note that he wrote on the back of my daughter's grade nine graduation program, which was 14 years ago, and it reads, being a leader is not about power but being in a position to serve. I would describe my dad as an introvert, a person who led with resolve in a, in a calm and confident manner. He, along with my mom, Marjorie, are strong role models for me. My husband, Pat, says that my life's purpose has not changed in all the years that we've been together which is to impact positive change in our communities through education. In working towards this, I didn't aspire, aspire for power, but for purpose. My walk and my work have been and is purpose-driven. Interestingly, even though I've experienced, experienced it, my life's goals did not include striving for positional leadership but it was drawn to and consequently emulate leadership that generates collective and collaborative effort for changes that benefit community. After years of researching, teaching, and writing about leadership, I believe that we leaders must work with people, and this work must be done in a good way. This may sound obvious, but for many Indigenous peoples, it is still a challenge to be heard, to be taken seriously, and to be included at important decision-making tables. Many Indigenous people know the phrase in a good way, and this phrase packs a punch. It can be used as correction, as a reset. It reminds us to walk, and talk with truth and integrity. In a good way also has us remember our ancestors and to learn from patterns from the past so we can clearly understand our current realities and base decisions in consideration of all aspects of time, especially the future, as what is decided today will impact our tomorrows and the lives of those children not yet born seven generations into the future. Today we sit in a stunning building, a building designed by Indigenous architect Douglas Cardinal, a place where First Nations perspectives inform post-secondary education. I believe that the leaders who negotiated Treaty, Treaty 4 in 1874, 147 years ago, hoped that through the signing of the treaty, we would benefit in magnificent ways. Take a look at the surroundings we're in today. We are hope realized. We are hope realized. As Indigenous leaders of First Nations, University of Canada, because there's more leaders within this building than me, what can we project into the future? I'm humbled by the privilege that I have in creating a lasting legacy. In the interview for this role, I was asked a question that I hadn't been asked before in an interview, and it was as president 
what would my legacy for First Nations University of Canada be? I thought about my legacy in the general sense, but that question had me focus on this place and all that it entails. These places, the campus here in Regina, the campus in Saskatoon, and the campus in Prince Albert. I answered by saying that by continuing to grow into my name, Mizoek Megokpe Pamotang, a legacy would be left for First Nations University of Canada. That name was given to me as an infant. My parents were in a grocery store in our small town, and an elder, Elder um, Ed Silverquill, heard me crying. Not sure if I was a colicky baby, but uh, I was crying. He came up to my parents and he said, I know who this is. I've been dreaming about her. And he asked if he could conduct a naming ceremony. And my dad said, he held me, and I looked at the elder straight in the eye, and I stayed quiet. Another indication that I might have been colicky. <laughs> Mizuwekamigokpepamonteng is very difficult to translate into English. I've had my auntie and my uncle sit in a vehicle with me and they came up with very close but, you know, different, different um, interpretations. And so I was explaining this to an elder in Calgary, Elder Reg Kroshu, and he said, we have a name for that in our language, too. So he, he shared the Blackfoot uh, phrase for my name, and then he drew me a thunderbird indicating how it would look. And he said, go get it tattooed now. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. <laughs> but it means, in the way that my, my dad would explain to me, he would say, it's the thunder that you not only hear but feel over a large landscape. And he would console me, he had consoled me as a little girl when I was scared of thunderstorms and saying, those are your relatives. So, like my name, First Nations University of Canada is about presence. Its presence needs to be heard and felt all over the world in ways that centers indigenous people's knowledges. This question about leg legacy also reminded me that we begin working on our legacy today. I'm very aware that I, rep that I will represent First Nations University of Canada wherever I go and I carry this responsibility with great respect. I've dreamed of working in a community that honors privileges and functions on Indigenous knowledges. This university, this, this facility, our facilities, is a realization of this dream. But as a child, a teenager, a young adult, because of limitations that were placed on me, on us, as Indigenous peoples, I never dreamed of becoming a president of a university. I want our children to dream big, to believe in themselves, to love themselves, to move past me, to move past us into greater accomplishments. In many ways, by many people, I've been encouraged to lean into values and principles in Indigenous teachings. Love, Zawendawin, love. And, you know, our elders talk about that um, over and over and over and over again. Perseverance. Akaman Minoan.
And there's also hope. And there's also courage. There's generosity. These values will guide me as president of First Nations University of Canada, as will the guidance of our wise ones, the Keiteak. I'm also reminded of the words that, that, that leaders that I interviewed for my PhD uh, research in 2001 had shared with me. And some of them, um, many, actually a few of them said that they weren't, uh, they, they didn't agree to sitting with me for the interview, um, so I would gain a title. But they were doing it because they expected me to give back to community, to come back and strengthen communities. Now, after years of learning about post-secondary systems, working with incredible Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples to advance education, Indigenous education, I'm in my own treaty territory to give back to community. I commit to sharing my knowledge, expertise, creator-given talents and gifts, time and energy to ensure that First Nations University of Canada thrives and, to, and continues to grow in all ways. Before I end, I want to um, acknowledge, uh, again, a few people in addition to, to my family and friends, to my, to my new family, the community. Um, and one of them is uh, my uncle Don Ottman. And uh, after he heard that um, that I would be stepping into this position, he texted me and he wrote that he remembers, um, and I was four years old, this little girl who, would, who was running up towards um, the kindergarten school bus and, you know, and, and stepping into that school bus, uh, Chris Olson school bus, and um, I'm the oldest of six. I have five brothers, so I, I did that skip to the bus uh, on my own. Um, and, and also, um, Warren and Betty Lou Elfson, they came from Calgary to be here with us today. And um, I, I worked for Betty Lou um, Elfson in 1989. So I got my B.Ed. in 1989, and I wrote my, my last final exam um, mid-April in the morning. And in the afternoon, I went to work in a, in a school for Betty Lou. So that, that was the beginning of, of my teaching career. And there are many, many others. I have um, new, new colleagues that, that I'm inspired by every day. And I just am so grateful. Drew Marshall is, is a leader, is a fierce leader. And, I, I've, and she was the provost of the, at the University of Calgary. And we worked on the Indigenous strategy together. Um, and, and also Shauna, Shauna Cunningham was a part of that team. And she's here today. I've got a friend, Ryan Wiley, um, who, is, who is flown in from Toronto today. And we've become fast friends through strategic work that, that we've been doing. And of course, there are many people here from the University of Saskatchewan. Deb, Deborah uh, Posega Osborne is here, and she's the, the vice president of research. And so all of this, all of these networks, including those that, um, that I have in Australia and New Zealand, I will bring to, to First Nations University of Canada. So I want to thank all of you for attending this momentous occasion with me, my family, and the First Nation University community. Thank you, Bob.
for stepping into this role when the university needed it and holding the place up for, for over two years and actually longer. I recognize the distance that some of you have come and the concerns related to the pandemic that you've moved through to be here today. It means so much to me that you've taken this journey. Miigwech to those online. I appreciate that you've taken time out of your day to witness this event. With that, um, I would like to say uh, and um, I just wish everybody um, a safe, safe journey, a wonderful day, and, um, and we, we do have um, food for, um, uh, that will be offered um, before you leave today. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, awesome, amazing, uh, amazing um, words. And uh, guess what? I think we're in uh, pretty good hands, you know. I think it's going to be good. We're all right. Um, <clears throat> so just before uh, we're going to, before we're going to close today, um, there's a few things that uh, we wanted to share here. And as Dr. Altman, our president in Dogamam, was talking, um, one of the things that came to mind uh, was that um, how powerful our Indigenous women are and taking on those roles and doing that for all of us is important and vital. And I remove my glasses here. I talked to Jean Oakes, uh, listened to her speak many times, our elder, and she said, uh, whenever you're saying something really deadly important, uh, you remove your glasses, you know. Yeah, she said, <laughs> said that. I always remember that. But um, I know I, I, I'm speaking here as asked to speak and asked to be a, uh, asked to be a uh, MC and a Yapaha. And I take that role very serious. And, and I wanted to share this as we go into the next performance and the closing performance and, uh, and we retire our Eagle staff. But I have, um, I have two daughters at my house that I'm raising. And I'm raising them to be Indians first before anything. I'm raising them to know that there's no barriers, that trauma, colonization, oppression, that they're going to overcome that and create and be something great. And I stood up here and I watched our president deliver a speech that uh, is powerful and amazing and be a leader, not because she uh, uh, aspired to be a president of somewhere, but because the creator put her in those spots to be in those places. And I want to say thank you. Uh, to, to this event, the ceremony, I want to say thank you to that because it's more than an installment of a president. This is allowing for the opportunity for my daughters to know that there are no barriers, that you are blazing a trail for all of our indigenous girls that are out there, that you're blazing a trail for them to take their true spot and that's leading us forward through difficult times. So I wanted to share that with all of you. And it's fitting that I do this at this point because this crew that I'm gonna introduce next is, is, is following those footsteps and, and, and speaking on behalf of our powerful Nehiawa Skwewak and, and our powerful indigenous women. And they use this uh, media uh, of music, of art, to showcase and advocate and to help blaze a trail and it's fitting that they come and do that for us. They have a really amazing, wicked uh, bio that I'm not gonna read because uh, I wanna introduce how powerful and amazing they are. We have Equal and we have T-Rhyme here. I've known these indigenous women to be advocates, to be truth speakers, and to be uh, powerful uh, allies that, that speak to what needs to happen here. And we're installing 
an Anishinaabe Kwe as our leader, and I know that we're going to be doing and, and being a part of amazing things because of that. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, know that uh, this performance that we're going to see and we're going to be a part of is helping to blaze that trail and to honor and respect in Togamam, our leader, as we move forward. So please help me, ladies and gentlemen, in bringing forward uh, the Cree and Dene master Jedi rappers of the world, Equal and T Rhyme. Let's hit the stage. Let's give them a big round of applause. Yeah. We'll give you your cut after the show. <laughs> That's our manager. Get it done, Scott. Now, wow, it's so we're such an honor to be here and to see so many familiar faces. So much uh, we call family, relatives, our elders. Um, thank you. Hi, hi. We're so proud of you. Iklanet de Salutina. Very pleased to be here with you guys as well today. Um, I'm here to represent for the women as well, and I think we're on the same page. Congratulations to Jacqueline. We're so very proud of you. So this track is called More Women by Women, and it's kind of like what Chris talked about. It's about representing women, uplifting women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who are we doing this for? For women, by women, for women, by women, for women, by women. Who are we doing this for? For women, by women, for women, by women, for women, by women, run or die, woman. Stay fly and hold us up high, woman. For women, by women, ride or die, woman. Stay fly and hold us up high, woman. Do this for my girls, don't give a darn about perception. For women, by women, is in session. Unapologetic, and powerful, and poetic. You better believe that. If I wanna chill, I can get it. Apply eyeliner slow and just so. My body, my temple decorated like a pro. My body, my temple make mistakes as I go. Flawlessly imperfect, I just love me though. Fashion over function since the 90s. Impress the boys, man, that stuff's behind me. Sneakers on point, I just can't miss. Won't catch me in heels until they're genderless. Relax my midsection and eat something healthy. Not trying to be somebody's trophy or wifey. No, mm, not even. Media keeps telling me be who you want to be. And at the same time, bombarding me with patriarchal imagery. Trying to tell the next gen how to not give up. Plotting revolution while applying lipstick Trying to tell the next gen how to not give up what? Plotting lipstick while applying revolution Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah Nails done, hair done, everything did But sometimes I stay ratchet in the comfort of my crib Cause I can do anything and everything big I don't need to compensate for what you like, it's your biz I say this repeatedly, man, I do this for the kids Gotta raise them up to have this knowledge in their heads Women are important, women are the world Identify your pride for inner child and little girl We live in a time that's putting pressure on these queens Focus on appearance, not in the pursuit of dreams Smash the patriarchy, interfering with our means It is our own duty to reclaim and intervene You can call me a, a feminist, I don't care To focus on my own, with my hands in the air Come on, everybody. you want to act like keep opinions Put over there I do what I want, so kiss my bannock derriere not you guys, but everybody else. Don't be shy. <laughs> Even just a little hand like this. By women, for women, by Nobody's women. Nobody's excluded. <laughs> for women, by women. Ride or die, woman. Stay fly and hold us up high, woman. For women, by women. Ride or die, woman. Stay fly and hold us up high, woman. Yeah. Who are we doing this for? For women, by women, 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 run or die, woman, stay fly, air, hold us up, high, woman, for women, by women, ride or die, woman, stay fly, air, hold us up, high, woman. This is for all the women and those who identify as women and those who support the women. We're coming up, and we've been coming up for a while. We give respect to those who have paved the way for us and for the younger generations. This is for us. 
Who are we doing this for? For women, by women, for women, by women, for women, by women. Who are we doing this for? For women, by women, for women, by women. For women, by women, ride or die, woman. Stay fly and hold us up high, woman. For women, by women, for women, by women, for women, by women. Thank you. So as we said, I'm Equal, and this is Team Rhyme. And we've got one more for you. And what does this one represent? This is a track called Revitalize. Everything you may have heard it on brought you by the Creator, the one about. Creator. Some people call him God. Some people call him Buddha. Some people call him Allah. Some people call him other names. We call him by the Creator, Grandfather. We're here on Earth only a few winters. Then we go to the spirit world. We are all from the Earth. All right, everyone. We need some crowd participation for this track, okay? When I say put your hands up in the air, I'm gonna need you guys to put your hands up. When I say put your fists up in the air, I'm gonna need you to raise them up high, okay? This track is called Revitalize. Brought to you by t Brown and Equal. Revitalize, revitalize. Put your hands up in the air right now. Revitalize, revitalize. Raise your fist high in the air right now. Revitalize, revitalize. Put your hands up in the air right now. Revitalize, revitalize. Raise your fist high while we rise. Yeah, I felt that life. I smelt the burn of a pipe. I've been the way to hell and back into the blade of a knife. I've experienced the hardship, pressure, and the darkness. That lonely in the corner, cause I'm living life so tragic. Meant what I said, never said what I meant. I even had the knowledge up, but gave it zero percent. Know the saddest thing in life is wasted talent. So then, said of people dying young, we need to teach and prevent. The devil wears red, but don't believe the hype. It's the color of a nation on a daily grind to get back into the rhythm of tradition, not religion. Cause that residential method, imposing type of living. Our people and the youth, we struggle as a group, fighting battles on the daily. Ask your elders for the truth. It only gets harder till you fight the sights of martyr, inner demons, and defeat them. We know we got the power, y'all. Revitalize, revitalize. Put your hands up in the air right now. Revitalize, revitalize. Raise your fists high in the air right now. Revitalize, revitalize. Put your hands up in the air right now. Revitalize, revitalize. Raise your fists high while we rise. I'll say it in my language, but I hope it. It means what goes around, it comes back again. And I believe that I look around. Can't you tell things taking effect? Where before I don't know more young people stand up to rock the boat. Don't wanna sing it to the system, they got to float. And if you aren't down, you better come on in. And if you aren't apart, you better learn how to swim. Young people, you know that you are the proof. Link to the past, represent the truth. Don't use that, cause that's all we got. Without you, we'll stop. Trying to connect the dots I feel ya, yeah, this road is rough So rough, the sun just stops We give up and my heart breaks It breaks every day My battle is based on my people's pain Revitalize, revitalize Put your hands up in the air right now Revitalize, revitalize Raise your fist high in the air right now Revitalize, revitalize Put your hands up in the air right now Revitalize, revitalize Raise your fist high while we rise. Hope y'all are enjoying your day. We are Team Rhyme and Equal, and this is the Four Women by Women movement. Revitalize, revitalize. Put your hands up in the air right now. Revitalize, revitalize. Raise your fist high while we rise. So how do we become resilient? It's feeling the blood in my veins, finding our voice and being strong enough and brave enough to get up and talk about our experience. Revitalization, y'all. Hi, hi, Nanaskaman. Awesome, another big round of applause for Equal and T-Rhyme. 
Oh, man, that's awesome. Holy smokes. For women, by women, check out the movement. Check out the uh, support the artists. There's some great, uh, great pieces in there. And I think the coolest thing about all of that is seeing, um, you know, Honorable Russ Morasti just get down and just kind of give some of those, you know. That was really cool there. Uh, uh, all levels of awesomeness, that Lieutenant Governor. You know, uh, representative of the Queen, the Queen would do that too, you know. I know it. I know it. Uh, so at this time, we're coming to the end of our, of our uh, program. And I have with us here uh, uh, one of our student presidents here to give, uh, to give some thoughts of uh, thanks and gratitude uh, for each and every one of you. And then we're going to dance out our Eagle staff for this. And uh, we don't want anybody to leave. There, are, there is some food. Uh, so uh, Chief Cadmus DeLorme wanted to make sure that uh, any gathering that he's a part of has to have food, okay? Um, you know, and if it doesn't have food, he doesn't show up, you know, so he's here. So, uh, you know, I'm glad that that's happening in that way. And, uh, you know, I won't make fun of uh, half a pie or I won't say half of anything, okay? All right? Yeah, Christmas is coming up, bro. Give your members a full turkey, you know? <laughs> okay, yeah, sorry, sorry. It's a whole year. Yeah, we, we can tease him now. You know, it's sensitive, you know, a year ago. Uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, at this time, I'm going to introduce uh, our, our Eagle staff carriers are going to get ready to retire our staff, but I do want to call up uh, uh, one of our student pre presidents here uh, to come give thanks uh, at this time. So, yeah, president leader. <laughs> Hello, everybody. How me takona, how me daguyabi. Waha chanka duta, Amanda leader among yabi. Chega kin zemacha ambo washte. Daya wachi wat wachim nagingte. Pinamea chanupa ohapa ichumbi. Wopina tanga. Hello, my relatives. My name is Amanda leader. I am a Cinnaboyan from Carry the Kettle First Nation. Good day. It is good to see you and thank you for lifting the pipe and ceremony this morning to the elders and um, for all the, for the drum group, for the songs and the singers today um, for helping us to have this ceremony in a good way. Um, I represent the First Nations University of Canada's Regina Student Association and would like to welcome um, Dr. Jackie Ottman on our behalf. Um, the student associations hope you enjoy your gifts and that they signify as a reminder that we are here to work together today, tomorrow, and for future generations to come. Uh, we wish you all the best in your endeavors and look forward to hitting the ground running with you. Of course, though, as Maria Campbell had mentioned, we, of course, will give you time to get into your role. Um, we would also like to acknowledge Bob Casius and uh, your hard work and dedication for the students of the First Nations University of Canada. Uh, Wopinatanga, thank you very much for having us and take care of one another. Awesome, you know, that's uh, excellent words and uh, thank you for sharing that. You know, I think she's from Carry the Kettle, that's because she's so awesome, you know. Yeah, us CTK people are really good like that, you know. Uh, but uh, I do, uh, we are going to, uh, we are going to dance out our Eagle staff. And as they're getting ready, um, you know, Dr. Ottman, our president here, has received a lot of gifts, you know. And, and I was talking to my auntie Marjorie here earlier, and she said it's customary that you put those gifts on online sales uh, uh, about an, an hour after an event, you know, she said. Uh, Anything before an hour, it's rude, you know. So, Dr. Ottman, you wait an hour before you start selling them on uh, Regina online sales, okay? All right. <laughs> uh, but I do want to. I do want to express on behalf of uh, the faculty and on behalf of all of our colleagues here at uh, First Nations University of Canada. I want to say thank you to each and every one of you. Uh, you know, in sitting down, I couldn't sit down as long as you guys did. You know, I'm I'm super ADHD and I got to move. You know, uh, so I appreciate all of you for uh, for being here, being present, and witnessing this uh, ceremony of this installation of our of our new leader here. So at this time. 
time, our Red Dog singers, our, our Eagle Staff carriers are ready to go. We're going to ask everybody to please rise and uh, we're going to retire our staff. This isn't to say that this ceremony ends, it just begins. But what we do is we give a time and opportunity for this to rest. We put it aside to watch over us and continue to watch over the things that we do. And our nationhood always leads us. This crooked stick, this crooked staff, it leads us, represents who we are, and that's what we talked about here today in witness of each and every one of you. So Red Dog, we're going to ask you to sing one and a go. Eagle Staff, ladies and gentlemen, anytime you're ready, Red Dog, here we go. This is a representation of who we are. This here, the staff, it leads us. This is our national anthem. This is our celebration, our honoring of all of our relatives. We honor our president. We honor our dignitaries. We honor the family. Have a good day, and hey, don't leave. There's food, you know, so we got some food over there. You can go ahead and grab that, and uh, do feel free to stick around, visit, chat and do some really cool social distancing visits and all that all that good stuff so on that mic drop we're out thank you for all coming here hi hi <laughs> <laughs>